Aproveitando aqui na SB o Instituto, SB o São Paulo Instituto, acabou a plenária pediatria ainda com grandes nomes, com a ajuda do nosso professor Marcos. Nós estamos aqui agora com o Tony Chiori, que vai falar um pouquinho sobre o futuro da uropediatria para nós. Marcos, por favor. Bom dia a todos novamente, os amigos do Brasil. Uh, Dr. Tony Curi é uma lenda da urologia, ele no momento ele é chefe em Orange County na Califórnia e eu vou perguntar um pouquinho para ele o que ele pensa do futuro da uropediatria. Hi Tony, thank you for being with us, thank you for your collaboration, your mentorship, your leadership and everything. Uh, I would like to ask you, what do you think will be the future trends in pediatric urology and how the specialty is moving on and how can we look to the future what you're seeing in the near future uh, because i know you are uh, a master of the specialty thank you marco and uh, good morning everybody uh, you know pediatric urology is evolving very very quickly the learning doubling time is now less than a year um, you know, you look at every aspect of our specialty. Many of, our, of the diagnoses are made prenatally by ultrasound. And this way, we don't have to wait for a child that has severe hydronephrosis to have their first episode of sepsis before we intervene. It offers us a lot of options um, in, in observation and early management to protect these children and their kidneys. However, our job as uh, clinicians is to not because we see abnormalities now that have not caused harm yet uh, to uh, treat everything that falls upon us. Our job now as clinicians is going to be to try and identify which patients are going to be at risk for future injury and intervene in those patients early to prevent that injury and then be careful enough to uh, watch those that have a lower risk for uh, morbidity from their uh, prenatally diagnosed uh, anomaly and be able to watch those on a long term and ensure that they don't get into trouble. So it becomes a very fine balance uh, so that not every hydronephrosis needs to have a pyeloplasty, but on the other hand, not to ignore the ones that will need it and not to wait too long. The same thing happens with uh, vesicoheteric reflux. All our management now is predicated on a risk, individualized risk for injury, for scar, for infection. And so not every child, almost two thirds of the children with reflux don't need to be on prophylactic antibiotics. And only maybe 10% will need to have surgery. So the majority will need to be watched carefully. Robotics is another area that is going to really make a big impact in uh, pediatric urology. And I'm not talking about the current uh, generation of the robot. I think the current robot is a bit of a clunker. But what we're seeing coming down the pike and all the minimally invasive approaches will benefit our little patients much, much better. The current robot is great for big, big patients like teenagers and, and, and adult patients. But for the little babies, I think it's a it's long, good. long way away. There's lots of other options that will evolve in the next few years. So a very exciting future for pediatric urology. But how we train our young junior uh, faculty and residents is going to be very critical in how uh, we reduce the morbidity of the diseases and not only the morbidity of the disease process, but the interventions associated so that we don't cause iatrogenic damage to these patients. Thank you very much, Tony. As you mentioned, we are incorporating a lot of technology, but we do need a lot of better training to our residents, our professionals, and a good connections with the other subspecialties like nephrologists, pediatricians, and everything. The kids, they need technology, but they need even more good doctor, isn't it? For sure, and, and the team approach to many of these, because we benefit from our interactions with genetics, with endocrine, with nephrology, with uh, even social work and psychiatry and psychology. Our, uh, our children with chronic illness, those that are posterior urethral valves that are heading towards renal failure, they benefit so much from uh, social work and psychology and support for them to, to be mentally strong as they go through this uh, very tough journey. Thank you very much, Tony. We appreciate your collaboration. Thank you for your time, your knowledge, your wisdom. And thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.